Welcome to The Alley Effect with Allison Blythe, authentically living life your way. We all contemplate making changes in our lives that would allow us to live more authentically, but it can be hard to take action. Allison is here to educate, equip, and empower you with the tools you need to start authentically living life your way. Get ready to eradicate your limitations and destructive patterns as you take full responsibility for your own happiness. This show is not just talk. It is conversation for profound self-awareness, acceptance, and appreciation, the key elements to stepping into the power as the creator of your very best life. The Alley Effect with Allison Blythe starts now. Hey, everyone, and welcome. You are listening to The Alley Effect, authentically living life your way with me, Allison Blythe, certified life coach and licensed clinical social worker. This is our opportunity to spend time together to really dig deep into this concept of authenticity, because we all know showing up in the world as ourselves is one of the scariest things we can possibly do. I want to support you in that each week, offering different tools, tips, and techniques to support you in authentically living life your way. We dig deep into this. We don't just talk about surface stuff and offer really a lot of fluff. This is your opportunity to come learn actual tools, tips, and techniques covering different things to educate, equip, and empower you. This is where you can come to transform through practical tools and some real talk. We have so much to cover over the past, for the next two episodes. Like there's just a wealth of information and I want to try to dig in to do exactly that. Give you some real equipment so that you can know how to navigate more of this thing called life, right? <laughs> so we've spent a lot of time together talking about actual ways that you can enhance your experience in authenticity and really building into uh, toolboxes as I've really done some some reflection and some review about what's been talked about on this, these episodes, I've realized like I've offered like a lot of toolboxes. I started in the very beginning of the SOS toolbox, that sense of self, 10 tools to help you really build a foundation, self-honesty, self-responsibility, self-compassion, like 10 different tools to actually build into that sense of self. And then weeks ago, I introduced you to that adulting toolbox, 26, and no, in all fairness, 25, I could not come up with the letter X, 25 tools corresponding with the letters of the alphabet to help you figure things out, right? Feeling more equipped for this job of adulting that we're all called to do. Turning 18 doesn't magically teach us how to do all of this stuff. The life skills that I wish so many of us could have been introduced early in on into childhood so that we could know more effective, healthy ways to connect, relate, and show up with one another. Those episodes are jam-packed. There's, there's three of those episodes talking about the adulting toolbox really intended to educate, equip, and empower you. Things that you could probably teach kiddos all the way back. And certainly even as adults, it's important for us to know how to do things. And then weeks later, I introduced you to a different concept the idea of being an empath in this world and took several steps deeper by introducing you to what it means and what some empaths experience by being these deep feelers in the world. And then really helping you understand the double-edged sword of that, the gifts and the struggles of being wired differently and how this can really influence your ability to connect and relate and show up in the world. And so today I want to bring those two worlds together, my opportunity to introduce you to yet another toolbox, very similar to the adulting tool toolbox. We're going to go through the letters of the alph alphabet, but I've specifically designed these for empaths. Stay tuned because you're about ready to learn a lot of different stuff, actual tools to educate, equip, and empower you in using your gifts, knowing how to take better care of yourself, recognize and manage energy in different ways, and knowing how to relate and be in the world without absorbing so much emotion and energy and the experiences you have with other folks. So these are actual ways for you to allow you to function from your strengths of much more capable way of being in the world, rather than feeling so saturated and overwhelmed by socializing and peopling. 
I want to step back for a minute and review that adulting toolbox. I'm going to try not to go into any of them, uh, but if you have not listened to those episodes, please take the time to do so. You're going to, both of these toolbox provide you really with a lot of different information. But I addressed in there tools like awareness, boundaries, com commodities, time, energy, and effort, helping you understand decisions that you're making, the way that you're spending and affected by energy, feelings, gratitude, your higher power, intuition, the importance of journaling. And if you worked with me for five minutes, you know I'm going to tune you into paper, pen and paper. Kindness, language, mindfulness, the power of no and using your word no effectively, the impact of peopling and how you're affected by them, but also who you're hanging out with. Quiet, rest, senses, kind of knowing how to use your sensory information, trust, the feeling of ugh, right? Like how often we get that sinking gut sense about what we should or shouldn't be doing. Visualize words, and X is the one I could not come up with. Yes. So if we talked about no, we're going to talk about the power of yes and zip. Not only learning to kind of zip yourself up, your energy, maybe your boundaries, but also sometimes folks, how often we just need to zip it. Like just psh, don't engage in that. These are all important tools that I wish everyone in the world could have. You can help out by sharing those episodes, talking about them, watching them and using those tools, learning to use them really effectively. I want to introduce you to some new ones and offer some variation and a much deeper dive for the empaths in the world, allowing you an entire toolbox for navigating specific dynamics that are really uniquely in tune to being an empath. Uh, let's dive in, right? Let's not waste any more time. First up is the letter A. And for many empaths, you will be able to uh, identify with this dynamic way too well. In the adulting toolbox, I talked about the power of awareness. And that is like first and foremost, if you've listened to any of these episodes, always just be aware, be aware. Self-awareness, one of the main tools. But for the sake of the empaths toolbox, I want you to use awareness in conjunction with the reality of what most empaths face, which is actually the risk of absorbing, right? I know there's a lot of talk in our world about being an HSP, which is highly sensitive, uh, your, your sense of intuition, EI, emotional intelligence, and maybe you even heard the word indigo child. And all of those are very specific ways of being wired in the world. But empaths have a very unique tendency in the fact that it's risk factor that they actually are at risk of absorbing emotion and energy from the environments they're in, the people that they're hanging out. Empaths don't just have like a hunch about something. They don't just relate or feel bad for someone. They feel emotions and energy as though it were their own. And if this is, if this is happening to you, you might have a hard time really deciphering what's yours and being able to separate out your experience from someone else. You might actually be absorbing emotion, energy, all kinds of stuff from other people. The risk is that without awareness, knowing kind of when you've been contaminated and absorbing things from people, and by using some of these tools that we're going to be learning about in conjunction, you can easily become very overwhelmed and saturated by the emotion and energy that doesn't even belong to you. If you're an empath, you can probably recognize this tendency to do this. Empaths need to protect, regulate their emotions and energy to prevent this absorption. And awareness will help you know when you're doing that. You probably have very specific signs and symptoms when your body starts to take on too much or take in and you're not learning to move it effectively. This is not good or helpful for anyone involved. It will wear you out and it will create dysfunction or dysregulation in some capacity. Maybe you've become flooded by the emotions and the experience and you've absorbed and it can look like a lot of different things. It can be fatigue, irritability, stress, overwhelm, maybe even what some might diagnose as like a clinical issue of depression, anxiety, maybe even panic. Maybe you've got some tendency in your relationships to over-function, right? You're someone who really kind of over-manages and you're over-relating to people. Maybe even codependency or a lack of boundaries. Sometimes you'll, if you've got, if you've absorbed so much of this information and energy from people, this might be some of the ways that energy is trying to come out of you, even somatic or like health problems that you'll start to recognize. 
energy has to go somewhere. It just does. And, and if you've absorbed it from the people and places and things around you without knowing how to regulate, process, and move, it will collect and it will absolutely cause problems in order to try to get out somewhere, right? Like scrambling around. So if you recognize your tendency to absorb, stay tuned because there's lots more tools available for you to, so that you know how to not do that and how to move energy more effectively. The next one is a perfect example. In the adulting toolbox, B stood for boundaries. And of course, as an empath, you are going to need to really use your boundaries very, very distinctly, very intentionally about what to say yes to, what to say no to. But for the sake of this toolbox, it's B for breath. Breath is life. You cannot have one without the other. Breath is life. Life is breath. And it's one of the easiest, most productive ways for you to move and regulate energy. It's such a powerful tool. And it sends signals to the body and to the brain so that how you use breath will influence both of those factors, the, the body and the brain. You can use it in so many different capacities. Rapid breath is going to increase and expel energy while slow, steady, deep breaths, maybe down way into your belly or out through your feet will calm and soothe you very effectively moving energy out and through you. You can send energy back to people through this visualization tool that we're going to talk about, but also through breath, right? Like kind of taking it in and sending it back to people. It can be very loving. It can be very gentle. You can send energy to different parts of your body through breath. If you've got some stuff kind of clogged up, maybe you play with visualization and breath to kind of move and disperse energy again, out and through you. You can move energy in and out of your breath, through your head, through your feet, right? You can just learn to play with it. Part of this work is learning to be playful and creative. It's also incredibly cool because it's available to you at any point in time. Nobody needs to know that you're using it. It's a tool that's vital and I'll encourage you to play with it as much as you possibly can. And next up, so A is absorb, the risk of knowing when you're starting to absorb emotion and energy. B stands for breath and the way that you play with and move energy to regulate your experience and to move energy out. C stands for community, community and connection. They are absolutely vital. And Brene Brown does an amazing job talking about connection in a way that serves. Here's her definition. Again, she knocks it out of the park. Connection is the energy that exists between people, listen to this, when they feel seen, heard, and valued, when they can give and receive without judgment, and when they derive sustenance and strength from the relationship. I mean, come on, that lady, <laughs> she just, yeah, communities, connection, where you feel seen, heard, and valued. Empaths cannot stand small talk superficiality, fakeness. They are sensitive to feedback and criticism, engagement with other people. And it can be in incredibly scary to show up in the world as yourself. Are you in a community of people where you feel seen, heard, and valued? Are you hanging out with people that really enhance your safety and sense of self in the world? It matters. It really, really matters. Are they encouraging you, supporting you? Are you that to them, right? Community and connection are vital to your existence. And my friends, I will absolutely encourage you to clean it up and be intentional about who you're spending time with and how that serves you or how it hinders you. We need to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to continue along this path of building into the empaths toolbox. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're back here on the Alley Effect. I am Allison Blythe, certified life coach and licensed clinical social worker, authentically living life your way, way easier said than done. And so I want to support you in your journey. If you need to be in touch with me, maybe you've got questions or struggles, maybe you have a huge success. I really want to know about those. And so if you want to give me a call on the landline, 859-341-7773. If you want to send me an email, I'm always open to 
those. And I'm always checking that. Allison Blythe at live.com. And maybe you're just curious about what's going on in this world. And maybe this is very new language to me. And you're curious and you just want a safe way to be in touch with me. By all means, allisonblythe.com is a great way to check out my website. Social media, you can follow, you can stay uh, kind of fed in a real positive, uplifting way. You can also be in tune with different events that are happening, different things that are coming out. And that is Allison Blythe Life Coach on Instagram, Facebook. So today we are talking about the Empaths Toolbox. All of this level of awareness and equipment that I want to hand you to make sure you know how to navigate through life in such an empowered way. I want you to feel capable, right? Feeling overwhelmed and incapable is probably one of the worst things. I mean, talk about showing up authentically. How are we going to do that when our inner workings don't even feel competent and capable? That's this opportunity so that you can begin to embrace your gift of being an empath. So uniquely wired, the world needs us and we need to collectively learn and support from one another so that we can be educated, equipped, and empowered. It moves you into this new terrain of feeling far more enlightened as you navigate through the world. I shared in the last segment about the risk of absorbing and recognizing your signs and symptoms of when you're doing that. B for breath and knowing how to use your breath to move and experience energy, connection and community, and, and really challenging you to assess how healthy are these dynamics for you. They really do matter. D, we, we talked about A for absorption. D stands for dysregulation, and it's another uh, risk factor for empaths. If you have a tendency to absorb, chances are you become pretty easily dysregulated. Uh, if you've absorbed too much, then dysregulation is kind of the, the next step of that. Simply put, this is not a very clinical or professional <laughs> diagnosis, but it's just like you get out of whack, right? Something happens and you've absorbed too much or your systems are kind of on this high, high alert, high absorption, and you have some kind of distress that's going on and you're in this sensory overload that's very common common for empaths and you have this emotional and energetic flooding. Dysregulation is just the next step. Uh, maybe you've become way too contaminated by other people's stuff, right? Your emotions get clogged up and convoluted. To me, it's kind of like when I refer to like emotional constipation, right? And it com causes complications in all kinds of ways. I get clogged up emotionally if I am not using all of these different techniques. That's why I want to offer them to you. Just like absorption, it's recognized it's vital to recognize what are your symptoms when you get out of whack, what's happening. Maybe you're feeling more sensitive to things. You're kind of like, maybe you're avoiding and isolating because you don't really know how to interact. Maybe you have physical symptoms or sleep, somatic type stuff where the energy is trying to, to move in some ways, but there's some restriction. Are you feeling things that you don't necessarily understand and you can't seem to make sense of? Chances are you've become pretty dysregulated. It's normal, right? It happens. And it's also important to take care of is the sooner you recognize it, the easier you'll be able to get yourself back on track. This tool gets you back in shape, right? The kind of recognizing dysregulation and leaning into both the adulting toolbox and this toolbox to help you kind of learn and move and regulate energy so that you can shift it much differently so that you can get yourself back in, in check. So E, and I'm offering a little bit of insight about my, my next project that's coming, things that I've been working on behind the scenes for actually two years now. Many of you know by now that I am writing another book, and I, it, I am so incredibly excited. This is my passion project. It's been years in the making, and it's really designed for you, my empathic community, right? Like, we do need this information. And this toolbox is a preview of a lot, a lot of the stuff that I write about in the next book, The Enlightened Empath. Stay tuned for details because information is going to be coming. We're working on that. And it just takes its own time, right? You can't force, which we're going to talk about later, you can't force things into creation. So I wanted to make sure in the meantime, while you're waiting for this book to be published, you have some tidbits to chew on. That's why I want to offer this toolbox so that you can have some information ahead of time and you'll be ready when the book comes out. So E stands for embodiment. 
And this is a tool and a process specifically designed to help you use your entire body. Okay. It sounds funny. Doesn't like use your entire body. Like, don't I like, but think about it. No, you, you really don't. You don't think about it. You don't use your entire body. You, I just did it too. This is really funny. So the point is, is that most people, I just said, think about it twice. Most people move themselves into logic. They use their brain. Society values logic, rationality, making sense of something way more than emotion. It is logic gets a lot more permission, clout, validity. We encourage, just like I did, just by kind of like maybe it was a little bit of a Freudian slip. We encourage people, think it through, use your head, reason things out. The idea that you learn to tap into your gut and your senses about things. Most people don't really get rewarded and recognized for your ability to do that. Our entire educational system is based on information and our regurgitation of that. Like we learn stuff and then we repeat it as though we've actually really practiced or facilitated something. Uh, we've taken away things like creativity and music and play, even physical education, right? Being able to use our body. We've deemed these as extras and electives. It's so unfortunate. Embodiment is the exact opposite. Empaths need to use their entire body. I, I, and you can see when I do it, like I almost can't help myself. If I had to talk without using my hands, I don't think I would be able to. It's really challenging to me when I experience really exciting things or really intense things. It's very common for me to, to move my body and to use my hands and intentionally move energy through my entire body. That's the gift of embodiment. It's moving through just the severing of this type of sphere and moving into your entire body so that you can experience and process emotion and energy. It gets clogged up. And if you're somehow severed from different parts of yourself, think about where you typically carry stress. That's where it gets clogged up. Maybe you have stomach or gut issues, maybe headaches a lot, shoulder aches. Embodiment is your ability to use your head, heart, gut to take in stimuli, to decipher, use it accordingly for your own health and benefit, incorporating all of your senses and systems so that you can best take care of yourself. It's really important, E for embodiment. It's an entire chapter of the enlightened empath. So next up is the letter of F. This one also is so important. And I get so excited talking about this because it's incredibly important for you to understand the difference. Um, this is, I write about this in kind of chapter after chapter of this, uh, of the enlightened empath. So I want, I talk about my client, Mark, who was working so hard day and night, he was putting forth so commodities, so much time, so much energy, effort. He worked day and night trying to move into this project to, to make it become a success at the urging of his father-in-law. The same man, he also worked so hard to gain the approval and acceptance of and really trying to make this happen. He canceled plans. He took out loans, you know, they, um, that, other people didn't know about signed signatures. He buried himself into the deadlines and the pressures, just dug himself so deep. From the very beginning, things felt off to Mark, but he used kind of this, you know, force mentality to kind of move forward with things, trying to make it. He thought if he worked harder and longer hours and paid more money and did different things, he could make it happen. He was unavailable and irritable to most of the people that were around him and trying so hard and yet nothing was working. And still he kept on until a final breaking point. You will not believe when you read in this book, you will not believe the way Mark's story works out. It really is miraculous. Uh, when he finally let go of that force energy he was falling into, and he learned how to play far more after having to pick up really messy pieces, moving more into flow, which is what the F tool stands for, stands for the miracles that unfolded for him were absolutely astounding. And he had to get out of his own way. He had to let go of what he thought had to happen. All the things he should be doing, right? He learned to use the trust and guidance of life 
that we're really trying to redirect him. Flow is the F tool. And it stands in sharp contrast to the opposing state of force. Force is a state where you are working so hard, just like Mark, he was in so much force. Flow is easy, it's calm, smooth accomplishment, and things just simply align. Coincidence happens, synchronicities, the call comes, right? You're moving along in a state of effortlessness. And I don't mean laziness. I'm not saying you just kind of lay on the couch and eat your bonbons and millions of dollars falling. It's not what I mean. But if you you start to learn flow, you'll know it very clearly. Things are working in conjunction. And all of a sudden, your mind, body, spirit, life, they're all kind of working and aligning. It's an energetic state that you can feel. Ease, coincidence coincidence, synchronicities, and maybe you'll see it if we compare it to force. It's exhausting. It's so hard. And you tend not to really get anywhere. Mistakes happen. People don't show up. The bill is more than is anticipated. You're irritable. You're exhausted. You're working so hard. And yet at the same time, not getting anywhere. Anyone who's read Misunderstood or listened to any of those previous energies, I talk episodes, I talk about TTH. And if you've ever been there, you know the energy and exhaustion of TTH. Basically, this is when you are simply trying too hard. Maybe it's in relationships, trying to please, gain approval, make someone stay, uh, take care of people. Maybe it's at work, trying to land the account, get the promotion, be liked by your boss, whatever it might be. You're trying to accomplish something. And TTH is filled with force energy where you're doing everything you can to make something happen, whether it should be happening or not. This is not to be confused with hard work and determination. There's just lots of dysfunction that happens with this type of engagement. Mistakes are made, things fall apart. Flow is different. Flow is the exact opposite. Things fall together rather than falling apart. And when things are TTH, you're trying too hard, I'll encourage you to learn how to take your grip off of things, lean back, Flow is magical. And I could tell you story after story after story. And I write about it in The Enlightened Empath. And learning to use these tools in order to move yourself into that element. Uh, the Most empaths will ask, what is wrong with me? I talk about that. I want you to know that sometimes if you're in that energy of force, you may be going in a direction you are not meant to go. Okay. So there force and flow are the awareness points for this tool of F. We need to take another break. And when we come back, we're going to keep going along and see where the road leads for the empaths toolbox. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're back here on the Alley Effect. I am Allison Blythe, a certified life coach and licensed clinical social worker. The Alley Effect, authentically living life your way. Today, I am speaking to a very special population, the empaths in the world, really helping you feel far more educated, equipped, and empowered in navigating life and really taking good care of yourself. I assure you, my friends, the world needs you at your best so that we can kind of align and show up in the world on a much more strengthened, capable way. We're addressing a toolbox today that I hope spreads like wildfire. I wish I had known about these things so many years ago so that I could be on the front side of my gift. We all walk our path. But my hope is, is that you learn these tools very easily and effectively so that you can navigate. You don't have to be plagued by being an empath. There are tools and resources available, and I want to spread those as much as I possibly can. We've talked today about the risk of absorbing and how to know when you've taken in too much of other people's emotion and energy and when things have gotten kind of clogged up inside of you. We, used about, we talked about the power of using breath and knowing how to experience the world through so that you can move it in and out of your body, emotion, energy through the tool of breath. C is for community and connection, helping you understand like how are you influenced by the people that you're hanging out with and how can you take some steps to kind of clean up and really improve the people who you're hanging out with so that you aren't quite so plagued, you're supported and encouraged in who you are kind of speaking the same language. Dysregulation, knowing when your systems have gotten out of whack, maybe too much peopling or engagement, too much stress, something's going on where your systems are out of, out of whack. 
E stands for embodiment and learning to use your entire body. And then finally, we talked about the fun flow, right? Just being able to recognize when you're working in conjunction with life and taking in that intuitive nudge when you're supposed to take action, when you're not flow is such a beautiful dynamic of being able to be in conjunction with life, with spirit. These tools are intended to work in support with the adulting toolbox, right? So these are very much aligned and can support each other, whether you're an empath or not, quite frankly. So keeping up with the flow, <laughs> we'll talk about the letter G. This one is really, really important, just a day to day, or certainly in dealing with people or stress. G stands for grounding and grounding is a perfect tool for you to find your footing, right? When you're feeling wobbly in a situation, maybe you're thoughts are beginning to race, something happens that catches you off guard. Uh, when you're starting to feel clogged up, maybe you're recognizing you've absorbed and you're becoming dysregulated. You can use grounding as a way for you to move energy and feel far more stable before you proceed. It's your opportunity to stabilize and get a sense of what's happening and what you need. Using breath, visualization and movement to ground yourself is a really powerful, like you can use all those techniques in support of one another. So as an example that you're starting to recognize absorbing and dysregulation and you use ground, you use breath, maybe you use visualization to picture and you send roots all the way down through your entire body out into deep into the earth, right? Or maybe you use like a power stance of kind of visualizing yourself standing feet on the ground. Okay. You get the sense of grounding and being able to get yourself kind of together. It can even be a mental process where you clear out the fog, send the energy down, and you've now become centered and focused before you proceed. It helps you learn how to respond to situations rather than just coming from that place of dysregulation and reacting. So G stands for grounding. H, um, classic for empaths. This one stands for heart. Empaths are feelers. We've already established that many, many times over. You feel a lot, you feel deeply, and quite frankly, you probably feel things that are not even your own. The heart of an empath is very in tune. It is very delicate and sensitive. It needs your honor, your protection, your awareness, and your respect, you know, it's kind of like this sacred little entity here that very much like a, maybe an infant that you would just be very mindful of and protective, interactive with, but yet at the same time, you're, it, you understand that it's a tender, delicate nature. Though it's that it has that dynamic, it's also, it knows, right? The empath is very much aligned with heart and gut. And this is your emotional guide. The heart will indicate to you what's going on. If something feels good, there it's okay. Well, it might be very much in, in alignment here. If something doesn't feel good, that's information. It's trying to direct and inform you of something. How much are you listening and honoring what the heart is trying to tell you? How in tune are you to the needs of the heart? Are you protecting and conscious of what it is you're allowing your heart to be exposed to? You have a personal responsibility to take good care of this delicate entity. The point, this helps point to the next tool, which is actually I. And I stands for influences. Uh, I was working with a client named Jeff and he had decided to buy a house. He had been through a really rough divorce, had gone through some just tremendous ugliness. And uh, this was his opportunity. He'd, got, he'd gotten a little bit of a reset. He wanted a fresh start, new friends, new atmosphere. And he was just ready. He was excited about some new property they, that had opened up. He did, he was crossing his T's and dotting his I's. He met with the banker. He met with the builder. He had secured his down payment. He even chose the lot that he wanted. And flow was really happening. Like things were just falling right into place. Every little thing opened a door to the next thing. Very much in flow when he he was trying to build this or buy, build and buy this house until, until the one day he brought his mother to the property. <laughs> and then it was like, dun, 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 dun. she began to question him every decision that he had felt good about everything he had kind of walked through things that had aligned. She reminded him of all the other things, the state of the economy, interest rates, crime rates, like 
you know, like, oh my goodness, right? What was happening in the government? What was happening in the economy? What was happening overseas? The location and maybe all the things that might happen in the future with the location. Holy cow. Before long, he started to completely doubt himself. He was wobbly. You know, talk about grounding. He was now dysregulated. He had absorbed all of the things from her experience and had become really ungrounded and uncertain about everything he had just decided about and felt so good. So thank goodness the next day after this, he had an appointment scheduled with me. And in his uncertainty, he, uh, she was now kind of like fueling all of that, all of the points that she had brought up. He was starting to think and rethink everything he had already decided upon and, and had felt good about. We took a moment to identify how much of his mom's energy he had absorbed. She had always been someone much more fear driven. Generations had kind of taught her a, a much different approach than what he was trying to practice. He had become really dysregulated. He, even as he described it, he could sense that his heart was pounding. His thoughts were racing. His gut was sinking, right? Like he could tell his physical symptoms of what was happening. We spent a few moments, kind of allowed him to use the breath and get himself re-centered and re-grounded so that we could proceed even with the conversation. That's how out of whack he had gotten. Finally, he was just able to tune in and assess really clearly what he wanted, understanding the fear-based decisions that his mom had always made and how much he had worked to overcome that state and that mentality. Before long, he was able to reset himself, get some clarity and establish what he wanted to do, the decision that really was right for him. How much I, he had seen how clearly she had knocked him off kilter and how much he had allowed that. I wonder for you, how much do you allow other people's opinions and feedback knock you off course? When you start to decide or question something and you do you tune in or are you the person who looks out? And if you are the person who looks out, how healthy are your influences? Is it a community of connected people that really do have your best interests? Are they aligned with positivity and curiosity and wonderment? Or are they kind of fear-driven and really negative? Do these influences help or hurt you? Really important to assess. Empaths um, have their high sense of knowing and sensing, right? They do have these sensory spidey elements and they can easily be influ influenced by what's going on around them, right? What other people think, what other people prefer, what they feel. How much are you allowing other people to weigh into your life? Are you giving your power away and allowing yourself to get knocked off kilter? How do you recognize when this is starting to happen? One of the tools of the adulting is awareness. Do you know when you're becoming dysregulated by your wobbliness in your decision? Maybe you start to overthink. Remember all the way back to that SOS toolbox. I talked to you about self-honoring. Self-honoring is your ability to align your thoughts and your behavior with what's in your best interest. If you are noticing you're, you're pretty influenced by certain people, places, and things, are you reflecting back on self-honoring for what's right for you? Really important to consider. Empaths are not only sensitive to emotion, energy, environments, but also what goes on around them with people, places, and things. Empaths are also really sensitive to things. This is in alignment with influences. The chemicals you're exposed to, medications may affect you much differently. The foods you eat, things you drink, um, alcohol included, energy drinks, coffee, different substances, right? Things like smells, fragrances, textures. You might be highly influenced by this. It's important to consider, right? How much are you allowing social media, news, TV? You do have a personal responsibility to stay very much in charge. So along with I, I'm going to reflect J, which J stands for junk. <laughs> World is filled with junk. Bottom line, raise your standards, right? If you are noticing these influences and understanding how these things impact you in both good and bad ways, I'll encourage you to raise your standards about what you're tolerating and are there elements of kind of this junk in the Enlightened Empath, I offer an entire assessment for you to look clearly at what's going on in and around you and what is it that you're allowing? Where can you start to clean up? Your environment is everything inside of you and outside of you. And if you've allowed yourself to become polluted and plagued 
by different types of things, I'll encourage you to clean it up, food, drink, chemicals, filter, fillers, like all these concocted substances. Is that what you're fueling into your body? How much are you contaminated by external junk in, in the way that they influence you, but also internal junk? Are you surrounded by different types of things that really impact your sleep, your health, cause aches and pains, impact your stamina, your mental focus, and your mood? We are sensitive creatures. We need to be conscious if we're influenced by things and allowing way too much junk, right? All right. So there you go. Next up is knowing. I'm going to take a pause and we're going to take a break before we move into knowing. But that's the new tool that's next on deck. Stay tuned. We'll be right back here at the Alley Effect, authentically living life your way. Here we are back talking about the Empaths Toolbox, really an incredible resource for you. We've talked so, so far, we've gone through the alphabet and we've landed on the letter K and K stands for knowing. How many times have you sensed something about someone, but you've overridden it, minimized it, denied it, kind of ridiculed yourself only later to find out that you're a hundred percent right. Or maybe you've kind of had a hunch, but you've allowed other people to talk you out of it. Think you're overreacting or being too sensitive, right? And then, you know, later on your hunch was spot on. Have you ever had this gut reaction to something in which your body knows but you, you're confused by it and you haven't necessarily aligned with the power of this knowing. Empaths know, they just can tell stuff. They do have those spidey senses. And oftentimes you might even not know how you know, but you know that you know, <laughs> right? It's just like, I don't know where this is coming from, but I know this for sure. You sense, detect, and feel things, even when they don't make sense or other people kind of override, right? This knowing is often an intuitive nudge, kind of a sense, maybe from a higher entity, God, spirit, higher power, your instinct is trying to convey some type of information. This is guidance, direction, and protection. It's super, super powerful. And knowing that that knowing that that knowing is actually a gift and an ability for you. Learning to listen to this, honoring and respecting it is huge. It's a direct alignment and link to your higher power. The intuition, the knowing, it always knows. These are critical tools for the empath to be able to use and to lean into so that you can be more educated, equipped, and empowered. These are all specifically designed to help you recognize your emotion and your energy so that you can learn how to protect and honor your feelings and your needs. So let's keep rolling. L, I mean, what better letter than L for love, right? Because we've already established so many times over that empaths are really big feelers. There, you might have a lot of different definitions and images of what love really is. Your definition may be really healthy. Maybe you had solid examples growing up, really good role models, huge community of very loving, safe people. And maybe not so much. It's common for empaths to confuse empathy with enabling and compassion with codependency and even caretaking. They are not the same thing. Defining and getting crystal clear about what healthy love looks like and feels like to you is essential. Remember that B in the adulting toolbox stood for boundaries. The more boundaries you have and the more you can familiarize yourself and follow through with them, the healthier you will be. Healthy love consists of your ability to use your yes and your no effectively, to offer really safe space and distance so that you are at your highest and best and you can show up with people in a really loving capacity and not that caretaking codependency. Of course, when, when we're in love, whether it's no matter what relationship we're in, of course, there's sacrifice. It's just not this martyred, detrimental sacrifice. And of course, there's going to be compromise, but it's not soul sucking character compromise. There's a balance to being available to others, but also knowing how clearly to take care of yourself and to act in your own best interest. That's that tool of self-honoring. 
having love and compassion for others, and also being able to stay very grounded and in tune with your own elements of self-care. One of the SOS tools I refer to is self-define. I really encourage you to explore deeply your understanding and even your personal definition of love. Wrestle it out. This is your definition. And it's one, it doesn't have to be one that's been assigned or dictated by romance novels, movies, fairy tales. Like we become, we talked about influences from the time we're little, we learn things like happily ever after, but we've got to have some skills in order to know how to navigate relationships. Some other SOS tools I offer are self-honoring and self-respect. Are you aligning your behaviors, your boundaries, your yes, your no, your self-care with your highest version of love? Okay. Lots of food for thought. Definitely worth taking a good, hard look at. Before we wrap up, let's get halfway through the alphabet and land on the letter M. And this one, very much like breath and grounding, this one is really critical because it stands for movement. You'll see in kind of watching me oftentimes, I move my body pretty consistently. I, emotion and energy, they, it's kind of electrifying and they can easily become very clogged up. And if you have a tendency to be a big feeler and you are at risk of absorbing other people's emotion and energy, and if you struggle to recognize when this is happening or you become uh, contaminated or saturated with things that are going on around you, movement is an essential tool that will allow you to regulate your experience and purge anything that gets clogged up. Right? If you're starting to notice it, using movement proactively or maybe even reactively, either one is totally fine. But having, if you're using it proactively, that just means having a consistent practice of you being able to clean and clear out your emotion and energy on a regular basis. You're not waiting for that stress point or that crisis point of recognizing things getting too clogged up. I believe very much in a daily practice of some type of movement. It can be anything, walking, stretching, Qigong, running, running up and down the stairs. It, it doesn't matter. Singing, dancing. It can just be the movement of your body and energy. Anything that moves energy in and through and outside of you, it's really powerful practice. Uh, if you notice some sense of saturation, stress, overwhelm, you can use movement to cleanse and to purge. and as a bonus, you can use breath and movement in conjunction with each other, that if you're really moving your body, using breath as a way to take in air and energy, and then using movement to expel, right, and expand what's happening in you, using breath and even visualization can be really powerful too. So if you're using movement, breath, and visualization in the process, right, this is what I mean by all of these tools are meant to be used in support and in conjunction with each other, right? There is so much information and there's so many different ways, so many nuances you can use. You can't do this stuff wrong. If you're practicing, just know that you're in the right spot. Movement can also be supported. This is going to sound a little contrary, but even in meditation, some elements of stillness, you know, maybe you're visualizing energy moving in and out of your body, right? You can play with this stuff. This is an element of curiosity, playfulness, and deciding for you what works. I can provide the basic structure and it's for you to kind of practice and find your own capability of using these tools. So for today, we need to end, but we talked about absorbing breath, community and connection, dysregulation embodiment, flow, grounding, heart, influences, junk, knowing, love, and movement, right? All of these tools really intended to equip and educate, equip, and empower. This really is the name of the game. And so if you want to be in touch with me, if again, if you have any type of questions, I want to hear how these tools are supporting you in authentically living life your way. It really matters. So, and if you're really confused, you've listened to these tools and you're not really sure how to use them. I want to offer you as much support as I can. So please be in touch. Allison Blythe at live.com is the way you can send me an email. I'm beginning to talk about this more and more and more um, on social media, Allison Blythe Life Coach. You can find me on those platforms. 
The other exciting thing is as we wind down the alley effect and I move into this venture of the enlightened empath, if you visit my website, you'll see all kinds of updates that are available there where you can start to stay tuned to when the book is going to be released, ways to get little snippets about it, because this really is a game changer. So if you want to do that, go to my website. You can sign up uh, for all of the updates and the newsletters that are happening. You can do that on social media, Allison Blythe Life Coach or Allison Blythe com and you can sign up there. My friends, thank you so much. This really matters to me. And I really honor the fact that you've chosen to spend your time with me. I am Allison Blythe, certified life coach, licensed clinical social worker. And this is the Alley Effect, authentically living life your way. See you next time. Thanks for tuning in to the Alley Effect with Allison Blythe. The moment you decide to take control of your own well-being, you start the journey of authenticity. Tune in next time for more empowering conversations and practical tools to help you shed your fear, worry, comparison, and less than beliefs. Stick with us as you step into the driver's seat and head off onto the road of success and happiness. Your best life awaits.